Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. This session we're going to cover introduction to layouts, viewports, plotting, and in AutoCAD 2018. So we like to go to back to basics in this track. We try to cover things that are very basic functionalities in AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT specifically, and hopefully we show you some things that you might not have known that may help your workflow to get things going a little more efficiently. So we are all over right now. Um, I am Mariah in the Boston office. Also presenting, we'll have Zach in Lake Oswego, and we have Naman moderating over in Cincinnati. So before we get started, feel free to ask any questions in the chat window. We'll answer as time allows. This session will be recorded, and previous sessions along with this one will be available in the registration emails that come through. So you'll be able to pull those references up on YouTube and go over anything you might have missed. So coming up, we have the AutoCAD Content Management and Customization webinar on November 16th. So anybody getting set up with standards and things like that, you want everything to be the same throughout the entire office, that'll be a really helpful webinar. December 14th, we're going to get into some 3D modeling and rendering, what you can potentially do with that. And January 18th, we'll have our AutoCAD for Mac webinar. We do about one of these a year, so if you have a Mac and you're looking to get into AutoCAD on that operating system, this will be a great one to get you started with the slight differences. There's a bit of a different look and feel to the Mac version, uh, and this will help you get started with that. So again, all of our past webinars are available on our Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist on YouTube. And you can download the data sets on our box drive and follow along if you like. Um, so all of these links will be available in the reference email that will come through after this. Um, so you'll get the slide deck and all of these links. Um, and if you do want to join our AutoCAD Customer Council and be part of our beta to test out new versions of AutoCAD, you'll have a link to that as well. So these, since it is a getting started webinar, we like to include some links for getting you started with other things as well. Um, we've got some general troubleshooting, system requirements, and uh, learn and explore links that will help you get started with all of the functionality in AutoCAD. So now we're going to run some polls and ask you guys a couple quick questions. The first one, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? So we've got mostly not the first one. A few new people though. All right. So let me share that with you. So we've got 11% new people and 89%, this is not your first one. So if it's not your first one, welcome back. If it is, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you learned something. So our next question, what AutoCAD application are you using? Uh, we've got Windows and Mac, LT uh, for Windows, LT for Mac. Looks like most people are on Windows. LT and regular AutoCAD, but a couple Mac users. So that um, upcoming webinar for the Mac would definitely be helpful for you guys. Right, so 62% AutoCAD for Windows, and we've got 35% AutoCAD LT for Windows, but a couple Mac users, 3% both LT and uh, regular AutoCAD for Mac, and 1% on both. All right, so next, what is your current version of AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT? Are you on the most up-to-date? Are you using one of the older ones? Where are you guys at? All right, so it looks like most people are on 2018 right now. A couple people using 2017 and 16. 
we've got 68% on the latest version, uh, 14 on 2017, one version back, 12 on 2016, and 4% on that earlier version. So if you are on the earlier version, subscription uh, would allow you to move up to the latest. Um, might be a good option. Um, our next and last poll for right now, using AutoCAD, iPlot, and or create PDFs from either the model tab, the layout tabs, a mix of both, or you just haven't printed PDFs in AutoCAD yet. Um, so it looks like most people are using the layout tabs or both. Few people still on the model tab. Um, so hopefully this webinar is helpful to get you started with those layouts. All right, so we've got a model tab, 7%. So this will be very useful. 51% uh, already using the layout tabs. 38% using a good mix of both. 3% um, haven't created PDFs in AutoCAD yet. So hopefully this will be a helpful webinar for you. And we've got 1% that aren't quite sure what the model and layout tabs are. And that's okay. This webinar will definitely help you get started with those. So in this webinar, we're going to go over creating layouts and creating viewports and scaling those viewports to get the proper sizes of objects on the page. And then I'll be going over the page setup manager and the plotter manager. So let's hand this off to Zach so he can show us some of this in AutoCAD. Thank you, Mariah, and uh, again, welcome to everybody. I uh, apologize in advance for my voice, which is a little shot, but we'll get through it. As Freddie Mercury once sang, the show must go on. So hopefully you can see my screen at this point. I will double check that, but it doesn't look like it's quite loaded up yet. Um, Mariah, maybe you can confirm for me if uh, that's I coming through. I can't quite see it yet. I think it's still loading. All right. All right. So, as I was saying, <laughs> all right. So here we are. We have AutoCAD LT 2018. Uh, it's been pretty much reset back to default. I've got a sample drawing open here. I want to get a couple things of terminology out of the way for starters. So I'm on the model tab. And this is where, again, for, for people who are really beginning to use the software, uh, the model tab and the layout and paper space and model space, those those uh, the terms can get confusing. So I want to cover them just real quick so we can move on. Uh, I'm on the model tab. A lot of people say, well, you're in model space. Yeah, kind of, but let's just keep it called the model tab for right now. And I'll show you what I mean in difference. I'm going to go to a layout tab. And a layout tab is a virtual piece of paper. Um, you can plot from the model tab, you can create PDFs from the model tab, but in order to really get things sized and scaled correctly for output to PDF or to paper, layouts are really the way to go, and we'll show you why here. As you can see, the, the dashed line around everything is emblematic of your margins of your paper, and I've made the viewport here green, and we'll talk in a minute what viewports are, how they work, but um, also, you can see here I've got a, a title block, and uh, the title block doesn't show on the model tab because it's in paper space. And that brings me to this button down here on the bottom, which will toggle me between model or paper space. Now, when I click it, it's not going to take me back to the model tab. It's going to take me into the activated viewport here. And you can see that the border of the viewport just got thicker because I'm now in model space. And so I, I usually refer to being in an activated viewport as model space versus the model tab, which is over here. What's good about a layout is that, as the button suggests down here, you have access to draw things or manipulate objects uh, in both model space and paper space. Now, if we toggle back over to paper space, what is paper space? It's space and objects, and it's a level of drawing that only exists on your layout. Uh, you notice if I go to the model tab, I don't see any of that title block information there because that information is exclusively contained in paper space on this particular layout. 
So uh, therein lies the distinction. And you can get in and out of paper space by uh, double clicking inside a viewport activates the viewport, double clicking outside the viewport takes you back to paper space, or you can use this button here. Or you can use the commands M space and P space if you really like to type. As you can see here in the command line, those have been putting themselves in here as we've been going. So what's so good about a layout? A layout is exactly a virtual piece of paper. Shows you what you're going to get when you do output to either a PDF, DWF, or to a physical plotter. Or uh, the other thing, which not so much in Vogue anymore, is making a, a plot file that you would then take to a Reaper graphics firm who happened to have a big plotter on which you could output your drawing if you didn't happen to own a big, huge plotter, which can cost lots of money, and smaller firms sometimes don't have them. That's just how it is. So again, not so much anymore. You can take PDFs to the repro shops, and they'll print them out from PDF just the same as they would anything else. Uh, PDFs come a long way, and we fully embraced it here in AutoCAD. So uh, the, the, the thing about the model tab is that you draw everything one to one. If something's 90 feet, as you can see there, it's 90 feet. You draw it in 90 feet in, in the actual drawing units. Now, obviously, we can't print something 90 feet on 11, and a half, 11 by 8 and a half piece of paper or even some of the larger architectural paper sizes. They're just not that big. This particular layout, which you're looking right now, is a ArchD expanded paper size, which is 24 inches by 36 inches. So what you can do on a layout versus the model tab is you can represent things at multiple scales. And the way you do that is through viewports. Now, uh, you can have multiple layouts in a drawing. And here you see I've only got one. But there's a plus. You can add another one this way. Uh, you can also make a copy of a layout by holding down the control key and clicking on your layout and then dragging to the right there where you see it say plus and then let go. And now I've got a copy of my layout, which I'll subsequently delete. Um, you can right click, go to move or copy, and you can make a copy that way by checking the box and move it to the end. And as you can see there, I get the same result as I did with the control drag. Either way you want to make a layout is fine. Or you can just say new layout. Or if you have a template from which you'd like to create a new layout, same thing. You'll browse to a drawing file that contains other layouts. Um, let's delete this. Lastly, the one thing I would like to point out is the design center. It's a much unused feature. Um, it hasn't been a lot of development on it in the last few years, so it's kind of fallen out of favor maybe as far as in the new features. But it's still as effective as it ever was. Control 2 will bring you up the design center or typing DC at the command line, or it's also somewhere in the ribbon, but at the moment it escapes me where the button is on the ribbon. So we'll go with DC or Control-2 for now. So in the Design Center, you can browse to other files, and in those other files you might find layouts, and you might find a layout that you want, and you want it in the current drawing. So you would just take it out of the Design Center, drag it into this drawing, and let go. And now you see down at the bottom, I now have a D-sized layout that I've just added to this drawing, from a template that contained that layout. So that's yet another way to get layouts into your drawing files. Again, there's uh, another whole webinar on Design Center. So check it out. Design Center is really, really a uh, fantastic tool. Um, all right, so um, we'll get into viewports here next. Viewports are nothing but a window through which you will see the content of the model tab. Um, if, any, if you activate model space and you draw something in model space through a viewport and then you go back to the model tab, you will see those objects. Similarly, anything you do over here on the model tab, you will view through the perspective of your viewport window. And viewport windows can be cut in many ways. Uh, they can be resized. They can be copied. And another quick word about the grid uh, that you can turn on and off in the model tab. I've got mine turned off, but anytime you create a viewport, the grid setting from the model tab will cover, uh, carry over into, uh, your, into your viewport. Um, so if I'm over on the model tab and I turn on the, turn on the grid, there you see it there. 
hopefully it's coming through on the screen there. If you go to a layout now and I make a new viewport, again, it, you may not see it there, but should be the grid on if the model tab has the grid turned on. Just a small aside, nothing terribly important at this time. So now I have four viewports, and what can I do with those viewports? I can double-click inside each one, and I can zoom to extents by double-clicking the wheel or issuing the zoom command. By default, when you make a brand new viewport, you should get the drawing zoomed to its extents of, of the, what's on the model tab. And that does bring me to the next thing that I wanted to cover just briefly because we do get a lot of cases and calls here on it. You might have a drawing here or you're on the model tab and you go to a layout tab and you make a new viewport, let's say. Let's make a rectangular viewport. And I don't see, you know, this little guy here that's on my model tab. Now I do see that there's an object over here and an object over here. If I double click inside to activate my viewport and I zoom into these things, I'll see that, oh, there's my thing that I thought I had. Maybe I didn't realize that I had this thing out here in the middle of nowhere. So if I delete that thing and then I zoom to extents, now I have what I thought I had. So if you ever come and you make a new layout or you make a new viewport and it doesn't appear that there's anything there, uh, the extents of the model tab, and again, if I double click and zoom to extents on the model tab, now that that line's gone, it'll bring up just what I thought I had. But a lot of times people will say, where'd everything go? Or I plotted and nothing's on there. Um, because the extents included objects that you weren't aware of that were just way out in the ether and didn't realize they were there. Maybe you got the drawing from somebody else. Maybe they put them out there. Maybe they were even on a layer that was turned off. So you couldn't even see them, even if you tried to find them. So there are a lot of situations where you'll have items way out and you don't know why the extents isn't working and why your viewports are empty, but this is a big one. So if you ever run into that and you're asking yourself, where's all my stuff? Why is my layout and my viewport empty? That may be why. So I just wanted to cover that real quick and we'll get back to the other drawing here. So <clears throat> let's say, as you can see here, there are multiple uh, representations, multiple elevations of this same uh, house drawing that they've made here. Um, if we look at the properties of a viewport, that's something you should get used to doing. Uh, the properties can be seen in the properties palette here. And the important stuff for us here, not that it isn't all important, but the stuff we're going to cover here has to do with scaling. So um, let's say I want to change my scale of my viewport, and I want to bring up a certain area to a certain size so that it fills up the viewport. The nice thing about the miscellaneous section here and the, the scaling within the properties palette is that each time you hover your mouse over a different scale, you see it change in the background. It gives you a live look at what would happen if you set the viewport to that scale. So in this case, let's go eighth inch equals a foot. And there's that. And this one over here, I deselect this one, I'm going to select this one. Let's change this one to, uh, let's Let's bring up a different area. Um, let me double click and activate this viewport so I can zoom in. Let's say I wanted just this area over here. So I'm going to change my scale to something that makes that area. And now if I look at this, the scale now, it's, it's a custom scale and it's nothing that's really Gonna, you know, you can see it down here at the bottom. It's 0 0.031161. That's not going to come out if somebody lays a ruler on the paper, ever. So we want a scale that somebody can can actually know and expect what they're getting. So let's say it's let's say it's three quarter inch equals a foot. Okay. So now we've set the scale for that viewport, and we're viewing that area of the elevations drawing. And you can do that for these other two as well. You can set the scale to whatever you want them to be. And then when you go to plot, since this layout represents a 24 by 36 inch piece of paper, 
if somebody were to plot this out on a huge plotter and they plotted and they didn't do any scaling when they were plotting, uh, you would get an actual two scale paper output. So you could take your ruler and, and, and apply that three quarter inch equals a foot scale or, or eighth inch equals a foot scale or whichever scale you happen to apply to your particular viewports, it's going to measure out correctly. In a lot of industries, that's very important. Uh, in some industries, they don't care. They just want some output on the page. They want it to fill up the viewport. And in that case, in those scenarios, doing the following is perfectly fine. Taking the viewport, making it as big as will fit in your title block or on your paper, and double-clicking inside to activate the viewport, and just double-click in your wheel, and zoom to extents. I get everything that's on the model tab, plus I get my title block, and everything comes out the way it should. Nobody's taken a ruler to the paper. They don't care what scale is as long as the whole thing is visible. And on a 24-inch by 36-inch piece of paper, that would be pretty visible, I would say. So details may not be as important to everybody, but uh, if they are, you can certainly get things really fine-tuned to scale. The other thing that you might want to do, and I'll just go back a few steps here, to where I have multiple viewports again. Maybe you don't want to see everything in every viewport. Maybe, and this may be not a good example for it, but maybe you've got all kinds of things drawn on your model tab. You've got the electrical system, and you've got the plumbing system, and you've got lights, and you've got furniture, and various things. And uh, if you were dutiful in, in drawing those things, you may have put them all on separate layers. Uh, layers can then be turned off on a per viewport basis. So we'll take a look at what that looks like here. We'll come into this one. We'll activate this viewport. We'll bring up our layer properties manager. And maybe we want to uh, freeze or turn off a few of these layers uh, in this particular viewport. So that's what the VP freeze column is for. So viewport freeze. So I'm going to turn off my elevation cladding. I'm going to turn off my dimensions. Um, I'll just randomly turn a few things off just so that you can see the difference here. When we look at this viewport now, you don't see this blue cladding uh, that's vertical. Uh, it used to be in here. So if you take that out and you, you know, think about if I've got a, a plumbing layer or maybe, maybe you even drew the drawing so that each uh, floor of a two-story or a three-story building, maybe each floor is on its own layer or you've got layers that pertain to just that floor. Again, you could make a viewport that has just the first layer. Another viewport maybe has just the second layer, and so on. So you can really fine tune the output here, and that's really the key. Uh, what I have seen uh, some people do is they'll go on the model tab, and they will just make several copies of their drawings, and that's OK. It's, it's a way to do it, and they'll plot, and they'll draw a window around the area they want to plot every time they go to plot. But uh, in my mind, that's a little more cumbersome than doing it this way, and it's not quite as reusable as, as easily as it would be where you're using layouts and viewports and scales and, and frozen layers in each individual viewport. Uh, it's just, again, uh, fine-tuning comes to mind, the term fine-tuning. It's a way to get exactly the output and the look that you want. Now, a um, couple of other things here. Uh, when you go to, and, and I'll go to the model tab here, if you look at the ribbon tabs across the top here, I don't see a ribbon tab called layout. Now, when I go to a layout, though, I do. There is a tab that gets put up there, and it's contextually sensitive. So when you go to a layout, you get the Layout Ribbon tab. And if you click on it, you'll get these extra controls that are only really usable when you're on a Layout tab, such as creating a viewport. Now, you can create rectangular viewports, which is all I've done here. You can also make a polygonal viewport, which the little icon gives you an example of there. Or you can do object. Object is pretty cool. And it hasn't always been, and Polygonal hasn't always been, in AutoCAD LT, but within the past few releases, they added it in. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like if we nuke all of our viewports off of this one. And let's say we drew a circle in the middle of our layout. Now, this is just a circle that's on paper space. Now, what we can do, though, is we can go to our layout and contextually sensitive layout ribbon tab. And we can say, I want to turn an object into a viewport. 
So I'm going to do, uh, and, and you can, down here at the command line, it'll give you various options here, but the default option is to select an object to clip a viewport. So I'm just going to select this circle. And as you can see there, it's now a viewport. And I'm going to turn off the grid because I don't like it. But now, if I select this circle, you see in the properties palette, it's telling me it's no longer a circle, it's a viewport. It has been converted into a viewport, and I can treat it as such, and I can do everything with it that I could do with a rectangle, rectangular or a polygonally shaped uh, viewport. Uh, I can change its scale. I can double click inside. I can zoom in. I can pan around. I can freeze layers. So it's a viewport just like any other, but I just used an object in this case to cut a hole in my paper space to view the content of the model tab. Um, there are a few other controls you'll have up here. Um, let's say you set your your scale. Uh, and the other thing I should mention about scale is, is in 2018, it's new. Uh, you'll notice here in the, in the center, when you select a viewport, you get this drop down here. And it's the same drop down as you see in the status bar or in the properties palette for switching, uh, for switching your viewport scale. So um, you may not want to use it that way. Uh, personally, I like the option here to select and change the scale within the properties palette because, again, it gives you that live look in here. Now, if you double click inside your viewport and you want to look at something closer and you go, oh, let's look at that. Well, you've just changed the scale of your viewport that you spend so much time setting. So if you want to prevent that from happening, what you can do is use the properties palette, select your viewport, set the scale to whatever it is you want it to be, and then you can change this option here, display locked to yes. So now, if I activate this viewport and I try to zoom in, the whole thing comes in and it gets closer and it doesn't mess up my scale of my viewport. I uh, also I'd like to point out that you'll get a bunch of this stuff down here in the command line that tells you that it's switching, that the viewport's locked and it's switching to paper space and it's switching back and it'll do that every roll of the wheel on your mouse. So don't be alarmed by that. That's normal behavior. It's just telling you what it's doing, uh, that you're not being allowed to really zoom within the viewport because the display is locked. And uh, that's what this option up here is for. You can lock or unlock your viewports up here. So a lot of the things you can do on the properties palette, you can do uh, within this layout tab up here on the ribbon. So hopefully, this gives you an idea and uh, maybe sets your mind to wandering to, ooh, I can do this now, and oh, maybe that would be a good thing to do if this situation comes up. So uh, a lot of things you can do with viewports, with layout tabs, uh, really gives you control over your output. And uh, for those using Mac, I know we had a few Mac users in here. Uh, when it comes to creating PDFs, which is becoming more and more uh, common now for people emailing documents back and forth, uh, the creating a PDF is a little bit different on the Mac than it is on a Windows machine. On a Windows machine, it's a plot operation. You're going to print to the PDF driver uh, versus the Mac operating system where the, the PDF creation is governed by the operating system. Now it's a function of the operating system, so it's more of a save as. But to keep things continuous for you, you will still go into the print dialog in AutoCAD on the Mac, and uh, there's the PDF drop down at the bottom to save it as a PDF. So you'll still go in through the print operation as if you were going to print to a PDF driver, but on the Mac there just really isn't a PDF driver. So I uh, just want to make that distinction there in case you're wondering, well, how do I make a PDF on the Mac? So um, that's a little bit different, and again, there are some differences. Each each release of the Mac operating system or Mac version of AutoCAD, we we close that feature gap a little bit more each time. So uh, we're going to have a new release coming out very soon here. So be on the lookout for that. And as Mariah said, uh, she'll be covering a future webinar that uh, goes over the new features of that new version. So hopefully that gap between the feature set between the platforms shrink even more with this upcoming release, and you'll join us for that upcoming webinar. 
And uh, speaking of Mariah, at this point, I will throw it over to her. She's going to cover uh, page setups, which we touched on just momentarily here. Um, but she'll get more in-depth on page setups and the plotter manager. Okay, awesome. So let me take over here. All right, hopefully everyone can see my screen now. So we're going to go over page setups and then plotter manager. So I've got the same sample drawing here. Um, when I flip to my layout, I've just got this standard 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Uh, but maybe I want to get it back up to that size that Zach had. Um, so what we want to do to change our page size in our layout is get, get into the page setup dialog box. And we can do that either by right-clicking on any of our layouts and going to Page Setup Manager. That'll pull it up. Or we can, of course, type in Page Setup. And that'll bring it up, too. Um, so we've got our layout here. But if we have multiple layouts, we should see them in the list. Page Setup. Okay. So they're not there right now. If you ever have multiple layouts and you enter Page Setup Manager and you can only see a few or there's one missing or anything like that, all you have to do is click into the layout and what it'll do is it'll initialize the layout and um, it should get it popping up in your Page Setup Manager. So now that we've flipped to Layout 2, we can see it appears now and if we go back and flip to all the other ones that are just empty default layouts. They should all pop up now. Yep, so now we've got all of them in the list. So what we want to do is go to our layout and we want to change the settings of the one we're currently on using this modify. So we'll get a quick overview of what it's using right now. Just the defaults, um, our printer and our 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. But we can go into modify and these in the page setup, it looks a lot like the print dialog box. These will be the settings that that print dialog box auto fills with. So we want to set our printer. I'm just going to go to the general documentation AutoCAD PDF driver for right now. And the printer will determine what paper sizes are available. So our AutoCAD uh, PDF driver has all of these sizes because we can really print pretty much anything with PDF. Um, but if we go back to my system printer, and we know it's a system printer because it doesn't have this .pc3 in it. So if we go back to my system printer, we'll see, okay, this paper size with the full bleed margin doesn't exist. We just want to reset to whatever it can do. And there's a lot fewer paper sizes that are in here. So let's go back to that AutoCAD PDF to get the most options. Um, we're just going to flip to a 36 by 24, I believe is what we want, right? And uh, our plot area, this is an important one to note in the layout space. We generally want to be plotting the entire layout. I know in model space, a lot of times you'll select a window uh, because you don't want to just plot everything that's there. Um, but in layout space, we want layout. Extents would do everything that's in our layout. So if we have some blocks off to the side or notes, stuff like that that we'll copy onto the layout, but we don't want printed with the layout, we want to select just layout. So it only prints this uh, white page that we have set with everything we want, and everything else can just be references on the side. This other option down here, plot offset. This is very useful if you're creating a book with bindings or anything like that, and you want to just edge the print over a little bit. You can get it set up on your page size correctly so everything views the way you want, and then we can increase the indent over here by changing the X plot offset, and then we'll get either, or, or the Y plot offset, and get a extra space on this margin or the margin on bottom. That way we have room for a binding or anything like that. Plot scale is pretty important when you're in model space, but in layout space, since our paper is viewed as one-to-one, -one, we generally want to be printing one-to-one. -one. Uh, it's very rare that you'd need anything other than one-to-one -one in, in uh, layout space. So some other options that we have are the plot styles. Um, I'm not going to get too into these 
because these could be a whole webinar in themselves. Uh, but the thing you really need to know is they interpret your color settings. Um, so if we go into grayscale and monochrome are the ones used fairly often. Uh, if we go into edit them over here, we can see what all of these colors are set to print as. So you've got your index colors, 1 through 255. And you can set those to print to whatever color you want. Um, but a lot of times they're used to determine the line weights um, and the uh, object line types, things like that within your print settings. So you can have your model space be as many different colors as you want for each layer to really help you see what the geometry is. And then monochrome will print everything just to black. So that's one that's used very often. Monochrome just resets everything to black. Grayscale will print everything with grayscale on. So this light color 4 and this uh, light color 9 will come out as very light gray. Your color 1 and your color 5 will probably come out about the same sort of grayish black. And then, of course, your 7 will be blackish black. Um, and we can set these and preview as well. So monochrome. And we can preview our page. So we've got all black down there. But when we go back to our layout, we can see it's still all color. There we go. And if we check this box right underneath the display plot styles, it should show it all on our in our page setup. So we can see we won't have to hit preview every time. So since I didn't hit OK, we lost all of our settings. I'm just going to reset these real quick. Expanded. 6 by 24 should be fine. Layout, we don't need binding. 1 to 1. And let's set this to grayscale so we can see what that looks like. Okay. All right, and it's regenerated this layout, and we can see our viewport now doesn't fit it anymore because it's not an 8.5 by 11 page. But when we zoom extends in here, we can see all of our geometry has gone to grayscale the way it's going to print, even though when we go to model space, we can see all of our layers are still here with their same colors and whatnot. So when we go back to our layout, we can see. And we can enter model space and, and still edit all of these with the same settings. That's going to get us um, what we're going to print. Right, so if we go back to page setup, we've got a couple other options to cover. Right, so shaded viewport options are more helpful when you're in the full AutoCAD doing 3D. Um, for the most part, this will just be quality in your LT. When you want normal, should be fine for most of what we're doing. Uh, whether or not you want to plot line weights, um, so if you have line weights set within the drawing, this is whether or not you want to plot them. If you've set them, you likely want to see them, so this is a good thing to leave on. Plot transparency is um, whether or not the hatches that have a tra transparent quality to them will be transparent or whether they'll print as just a block. A lot of times we want to leave plot transparency off, uh, especially for creating PDFs, because what it does is it turns your print from a vector print into a raster print. So instead of printing lines and text, it's printing uh, dots of color for everything, and that can really increase your file size if you're printing the PDF. So turning off plot transparency will get you a smaller PDF every time. Uh, plot with plot styles is whether or not it's using this plot style table up here. Uh, we probably want that on if we have one set. Uh, paper space last is the uh, sequence in which it plots the model viewports versus the objects in paper space. So if you're seeing a layering issue, this can help to turn that on. And whether or not you want to hide paper space objects. Uh, one other thing that's going to be used fairly often is your drawing orientation. Do we want portrait or landscape? And that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you're having an issue with your printer, and maybe one side's a little streaky or something like that, you can uh, test plot upside down and try and get a better print that way. But that's not a uh, very often used setting. Um, so we've got our 36 by 24. Hello. We've got all that saved. So if we 
click on our layout 2 here, we can see we've got DWG to PDF set, we've got our 36 by 24, but these other ones that we haven't changed are still using the 8.5 by 11. So what we can do is we can go to those other pages and enter our page setup, and we can select the settings from layout 2 and set them current to this layout. Or what we can do is create a named page setup. Um, so when we select new over here, instead of a new layout, it's creating a new file with a named page setup. So we're just going to call this 36 by 24 because that's the size we have, but you can call it anything you really want, just anything that's going to help you distinguish. And since we already set the settings we want in layout 2, we can select that as uh, what to start with. We'll hit OK. This will autofill with all of those settings it's pulling from in the other dialog box. And we can hit OK. And now we've got a 36 by 24. You'll see it doesn't have the asterisks around it. So anything with asterisks is an actual layout that you have that has settings applied to it. And then your name layouts are just going to be the named layouts. So now we can move to layout 4 and say we want the same thing over here. We can do page setup and apply those to here too and that'll get them into our drawing. Um, and then we can save this. So if you have this set up in a template, we'll just call this template. There we go. Desktop. Uh, so we have, if we have a new drawing that doesn't have the things we want in it, um, what we can do is import that previous page setup. Um, so we'll just create a new empty layout, right, page setup, and we can use the import command over here to navigate back to that drawing where we have those page setups in. There we go. And select that name page setup. So since it's not a layout, we can pull through those settings and apply them over here. So this is very useful if you're doing what Zach had showed you in the last webinar uh, or sec segment. Uh, using Design Center to pull through your layouts won't bring in the page setups for them. So you can use the import command to import those. All right. So next we're going to go over the plotter manager. So if you're using the plot command, and this will come up. If you're using the plot command and you don't see your printer here or you have a system printer that you want to add custom settings for AutoCAD in and you want to create a PC3 file for that, we can do that using the plotter manager. We can type plotter manager and it'll bring up this Windows folder or if you know the path for this Windows folder, you can uh, navigate to it yourself. Um, so this is in the support paths. It's the plotters folder, and it's where our plot styles will be housed. So we can see all of our um, plot style files are here. We've got our grayscale and monochrome. So this is where you'd put your individual plot styles. Or in AutoCAD, you could set up uh, your options to include those in this somewhere. There it is, the file path. So you can have multiple search paths to find those plot style tables. So if you want to do a network location uh, to keep all of your CAD standards straight, you could do that. And then, of course, um, have your secondary on your C drive. But we just want this folder right now. We'll go back to plotters. Um, so the add a plotter wizard is what we get into to add our PC3 files. And this will just give us a little introduction of what these are. They're configuration files for our printers. Instead of using system printers, these will save some settings for us. So the first dialog at once is where are these, is this printer installed? Is it a network plotter or is it on my computer? I think the only ones I have are system printers, so we're going to go with that for now. And then it'll display all of the printers we have installed on the system. I'm just going to select our Follow You West. 
Next, it'll ask us, do we want to import previous uh, plotter configuration files, which would be a PCP or a PC2 file. A lot of times you won't have these, but if you are migrating from an older version, maybe you want to import it, and you can use that dialog box here. So next, we'll, of course, give it a name, and this will be what appears in AutoCAD, our name, and then it'll add .pc3 to it. So we're just going to leave Follow You West right now. And now we can get into our actual configuration. So we can configure here. Our custom properties is the custom printer properties. So when we enter this, it'll go into whatever your printer driver has as custom properties for the printer. So if you're using a special laser cutter or anything like that, this is where you'll usually set those um, speeds and power settings. But mine's just a, just a regular um, fax slash printer. So I've only got, you know, page sizes and paper trays and things like that. So graphics, if you're seeing prints disappear on their way to the printer, sometimes it could be running out of memory and uh, maybe you want to adjust these graphics options to get better output. Um, we can do that in the graphics section. But a lot of times we're really only coming in here to modify our standard paper sizes. So this is where we can edit any of those and change our printable area, which is the margins all around, or even uh, if it'll allow you, I don't know if this one will, uh, uh, if it allows a custom paper size, like I know the PDF printers do, you can add in your custom paper size here. Um, if you need more of a margin and your printer is able to do it, we can edit those margins here too, and all of that will get saved into our configuration file. Close out of this, we'll hit OK. I haven't changed anything. And if your prints are coming out the wrong size, you can get into calibrating. Um, so if it's coming out uh, maybe a quarter inch too big or a little too small, what this will do is print out a uh, test paper and you'll measure it and put in what size it actually came out. And then you can really pinpoint the size dimensions and things like that through here. Uh, but we're not going to go through that right now. I'll hit finish and we should see our PC3 pop up in here. Yep. There it is, follow you west. So now when we go into AutoCAD and we do our plot command, it should pull it right up. Generally down at the bottom are our custom ones. Yep, so we've got our follow you west right here. That's the PC3 we just created. And that's not specific to any drawing because it is in your um, search paths. So if we plot from this one, we'll see that PC3 available again. Um, if we create a new empty drawing from our regular AutoCAD template, we can go to our layout one and plot as well, and that'll come right up. See, it's here again. But our page settings aren't filling in this one because we don't have any page setups. So over here, uh, where we've got, where was that original? Layout two. Okay, so here where we originally set up those page setups, we can get into our plot command and it'll show everything auto-filled like we did. We have grayscale, RGD, everything we wanted. Um, so those will save those will save specifically to the drawing and you can plot each layout um, with the page setup and it should just be the click of a button once you've got everything set up correctly. Um, so let's go back to Zach. He's got some wrapping up links, and then we'll move over to questions. Thank you very much. All right, so the additional resources you see here on the screen, there are links to uh, various pages within the help online for the product, and uh, these are you know topical to what we've covered during this particular presentation. But of course, the, you know the web help has everything in it under the sun about AutoCAD. But these ones we thought would really help you if you're just getting started with layouts and viewports and all of this. These ones would be the most helpful. So these uh, additional resources are in the slide deck that should be in your invitation uh, for this particular webinar. So use those. I want to make sure that you have those. Uh, also, if you have any questions or ideas for future webinars, uh, here are some ways to get in touch with us. And we always welcome any kind of feedback, be it good or bad or indifferent. It helps us make the future webinar presentations better for everybody involved. So anything you can offer, we certainly appreciate your time to let us know. So we have a few minutes left, uh, just over five minutes left uh, for questions. 
uh, does anybody I, I've been looking in the been looking in the questions here and there are some um, let's see uh, when I get when I batch plot I get a model tab print how do I turn that off so there is an option when you go to publish if you just want uh, layout tabs let me bring this back up here and we'll let's take a look it's moved over the years though so let's see if I can find it hopefully I can so you're right like if you you know here's a model tab and here's a layout tab and you can see the difference in the icons there uh, but if you just wanted um, model tabs or um, let's go back and let's see let's change this and Times donuts. I won't be able to find it here while we're thinking about it. But it used to be <laughs> right in here um, at the bottom. You when you would uh, let's see, there it is right there. Sorry. Yeah, it's when you go to add a drawing to your um, add a drawing to your published set that it gives you that choice. So if we go into sample and we pick a drawing. And we'll say we only want layouts, and we'll select that, and we only get the layouts from that drawing. Now, if I remember right, though, let's see if we take some of these out. Let's take out all of these but the one we just added. So we'll remove those, and we'll just publish this to PDF. And and this is one of those things too. Somebody was asking about opening the viewer when done. When you're doing publish, if you don't have this box checked here. It won't open in your PDF viewer when it's finished. If you do check this box, it will. Uh, that's the distinction there. So if we publish this here and make ourselves a PDF, uh, no, I don't. So it'll go through the motions. I don't have it set to open the viewer on my system here, uh, but it may do so anyway, just based on the settings. Uh, that's fine, and it's going in the background. Now, if I recall, the next time you go to add drawings to a published job, it should only include layouts. So let's take a look here. Right. So now, instead of adding in the model tabs of the two drawings that I have open, it's only added in the layouts. So in order to get there, you have to at least go through one addition option and change it to layout go through the motions, go all the way through the published job, and the next time you come in, it will only bring in layouts or model tabs, whichever you chose on that first option through there. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Would you mind where you were uh, earlier? Somebody had asked about how do you uh, put a name page setup in there uh, instead of default right there you were talking about? Sure, the sure. Questions. Sure, page setups. Uh, yeah, so like in no, here. No, no. Uh, if you go back to publish dialog box, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, see that are. the page setup instead of default, you can oh, name sure. a page. Oh, sure. Setup. Somebody asked that question earlier. Sure, so sure, 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 absolutely. absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Um, so if we have, um, let's make a page setup here real quick, and this goes back to what uh, uh, Mariah was was dealing with with uh, page setup manager. So if you make a page setup, you have to give it a name. So let's call it like uh, black and white PDF is our name of our new page setup, okay? Uh, so we're going to use the DWG to PDF device. We're going to set it to monochrome. Uh, so that'll make everything come out in black, even if it's color. That's fine. Uh, everything else here, we're going to set a paper size. Let's just say we're good with all these settings. So we say okay. So now we have this black and white PDF page setup. So what can we do with it? We can, when we go to publish, we can choose the first, um, the first one in the list. Do a control all with, uh, which is uh, control and the A key. That'll select all your sheets. Let's say I had ten in here, it would select them all. And then I hit the pull down for page setup, and I'll choose my black and white PDF page setup that I've created in this drawing exterior elevations. Now, I've got another drawing open called unsaved drawing, but and I know it doesn't have a black and white PDF page setup in it because I didn't create it in there. But the, the beauty of this is that you can take 
any drawing that has a named page setup, and you can apply that named page setup to all of the sheets in your published job. And that goes back to what we were talking in the questions a few minutes ago, where somebody was saying they were getting different results uh, when they went to plot versus publish. Um, my suspicion is that publish isn't using the correct page setup, or it's a, a different configuration than when they go to plot. So this is a way to make sure making a named page setup is a way to ensure that all your pub publish settings that you want to be used get used. Otherwise, you're just leaving it up to default, um, you know, which, you know, if it just says default and it's non none here, it's really nondescript of what the output is that you get. So that's the way to ensure that you get the output you're expecting. All right. So we do have time for just one last poll. Uh, we like to throw out at the end of these things here. And hopefully I can do that here. Let's see. Launch that one. So we're hoping that in this webinar you, you learn something new. That's what we're here for. This is not a replacement for training in, the, in any sense. So hopefully if you came expecting training, you're not disappointed. This is a very back to basics course. We just want to show you a few things that you can hopefully take into your workflows and add them in. So it uh, looks like majority of folks did learn something new in this one. So that's that's all we're after here. We, we, we like to see that. So share the results with you there. Uh, at this point, we have reached the top of the hour, so I don't want to keep you over any longer. We'll go ahead and end the webinar at this time, but use the links in the in the e in the email in the invite. And uh, I know I talk pretty darn fast, so my recommendation is to go to YouTube if you want to watch it again. Put it on 50% or 75%; it'll sound a lot better at that speed. Until next time, we in product support. Thank you very much, and have yourself a great rest of the day. <laughs>